In case number three, we're looking at what happens with when your numerator and your denominator have the same degree. What you should realize is that the numerator and the denominator are getting bigger at the same rate. If they're both quartic polynomials, we have an x to the fourth and an x to the fourth, then they're getting larger just as fast as one another. When this happens, we want to look at the leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator. Those are the only terms that matter. If we have a quartic, when x gets really large, the term that carries the most weight is always your leading term. The others really won't make that much of a difference. And that's why we focus on leading coefficients. What we see is that our graph is going to approach the value of the ratio of the leading coefficients on either side. Basically, if we have a function like our example from the beginning, where our leading coefficient, well first of all let's look at this. We see that the degree of the numerator is 3, so we have 1 plus 2. The degree of the denominator is also 3, we have 2 plus 1. Their leading coefficients, the numerator is 10, the denominator is negative 2. As x gets really, 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 really big, this output is going to keep this ratio. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity will be 10 over negative 2, which is negative 5, and the limit as x goes to positive infinity will also be negative, or 10 over negative 2, which is negative 5. This gives us a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5. Let's go to the graph and see how this matches up. Here's our graph of our function. And we'll also look at the sketch that we're going to finish. What I want you to look at is what happens when we look and go really far, so let's make this, there's our negative 5. So here's y equals negative 5. When we go really far to the left, our outputs approach that value of negative 5, but we'll never reach it. Let's go back to the middle. When we go really far to the right, again our outputs approach negative 5, but they never reach it. That tells us that we have a horizontal asymptote at negative 5. Thus, we see that this is true. The limit as x goes to negative infinity, so as we go really, really far to the left, the output approaches negative 5. And the limit as x goes to positive infinity, as we go really, really far to the right, our output again approaches negative 5. That's what happens when we have equal degrees in the numerator and the denominator. We must look at the ratio of the leading coefficients. Hopefully that part made sense. We're going to go back up to our sketch. We already know that we will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5. Let's plot that on here. Now that we have all three parts, we have our roots, we have our vertical asymptotes, we have our horizontal asymptotes. To start our function, we need to plug in a point. And I would either plug in one that's far to the right or far to the left. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the point 12. I want to find what f of 12 is. I'm going to use that point to start our graph. Go ahead, find that value. When you're ready, go on to the next video, and we'll go through sketching this graph.